Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a $50,000 reward is being offered for the safe return of four Americans kidnapped in Mexico over the weekend. And a massive grass fire spreads across several thousand acres in Refugio just days after the county ended its burn ban. Plus, a Fort Lauderdale-bound plane made an emergency landing back in Cuba on Sunday after a brood strike. Have a take a look on the outside. Well, coming a little bit more lighter in the sky, the sun began to rise. This is Quarrel, by the way, Quarrel ISD. Any rain chances? Not today, but there are some in the forecast. We'll take a look coming up. A head coach in the crossroads on the move. I'll tell you who coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astray and today is the seventh day of March 2023. The time is now 6.30 on your Tuesday morning. And on this day in 2010, Catherine Bigelow, an American director, became the first woman to win an Academy Award for Best Director for The Hurt Locker. And the Academy Awards are just around the corner, Trey. They're on Sunday. I know I'm hoping I get to catch them, but usually I have to go you know, to sleep very early for our morning show. <laughs> understandable, definitely understandable. I don't think I'm nominated for anything this year, though. So. Oh, best meteorologist. There, that's it. That's it. That's there you it, go. Trey. Best there, coworker of the year. There you go. Oh, wow. There it is, Two. Trey. I'm, I'm racking up there on the kind of work. 71 degrees on the outside of Victoria. Cloudy skies with some fog in the distance. Southern Houston winds near five miles per hour. Not much of a breeze out there. That's enough to kind of keep the fog kind of at bay a little bit, but not... Uh, creating too much of a wind and three miles of visibility currently here in Victoria, four miles of visibility in Edna and same along the coast in their inland areas. So no fog advisory is currently out for the region, but there is some fog here and there. So be careful driving regardless. Future temperatures starting off near 70 degrees and we'll keep the trend going in the low 70s through the 9, 10 a.m. hour. By noontime, lunchtime in the upper 70s or 80 degrees, topping 80 by about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll uh, keep that trend going to about 3 o'clock or so to 4 o'clock. And then the, we'll begin to see falling temperatures after that. Nothing on the radar in our region or throughout the majority of the state of Texas because the atmosphere is simply too dry. We have the uh, low level moisture in place. It definitely is humid on the outside low levels in the middle of the atmosphere. But need something to trigger that moisture and help to build the clouds skyward and give us rain chances around here. We'll have a front moving through coming up toward the end of the week that may help to do that at least at some extent. Then look like it'll be great rain chance, but there's, there are rain chances nonetheless. So we were thankful for that. We'll give you the details on that, of course. Your full forecast later on this half hour. Carolina. Thank you, Trey. An urgent search is underway for a group of Americans kidnapped across the border in Mexico. They were in a minivan with North Carolina plates apparently traveling for a cosmetic surgery in a region controlled by a powerful drug cartel. This morning, a $50,000 reward is being offered in the search for four Americans violently kidnapped in Mexico. Video appears to show a group of heavily armed men taking the victims at gunpoint after the victims crossed into the Mexican state of Matamoros. The FBI is investigating the video, which ABC News was not able to verify overnight. These sorts of attacks are unacceptable. We will continue to coordinate uh, with Mexico and push them for, uh, to bring those responsible to justice. The State Department is working with Mexico's government to find the Americans identified as Latavia Tay McGee, Shaid Woodard, Zindel Brown and Eric Williams. When I found out he was en route in Mississippi. Brown's family says they spoke to him the day before he was kidnapped. I felt a little uneasy. Like I said, Friday morning, I texted and I didn't get anything. McGee's mother says her daughter traveled from South Carolina to Mexico to get a Brazilian butt lift. The Biden administration is advising Americans not to travel to that part of Mexico due to the risk of crime and kidnapping, putting the region and others on the level four do not travel list. The same travel warning issued for Syria and Iraq. We encourage Americans to heed that, heed that advice. And with spring break season upon us, the level four travel warning also includes the resort city of Acapulco. Experts say if you are visiting the area, vary your route when driving from point A to point B. Stay close to wherever you're visiting, and to avoid making yourself a target, leave your flashy jewelry at home. The FBI is asking for the public's help in identifying the armed men in that video. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A shooting early Sunday has left a Shiner man in critical condition. This reported by the Shiner Gazette. Res sources say the man is recovering at a San Antonio hospital. Authorities have arrested a suspect in connection to the shooting. 
44-year-old Michael Joseph became a Flatonia, was arrested and now faces a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He's being held at the Lavaca County Jail on a $100,000 bond. Sources say McKim worked as a postmaster at the Flatonia Post Office before his arrest. No one was hurt in the shooting in Hallettsville, but police say the gunman is in custody. On February 26, police were dispatched to a possible shooting in the area of South Main Street and South Russell. Police say they found a 34-year-old man under the influence of methamphetamine, and they say that he shot a gun. The man was arrested on several charges, including deadly conduct. He was transported and booked into the Lavaca County Jail. Just after Referio County ended its burn ban, a massive grass fire broke out, spreading across 2,000 acres. The fire was at the intersection of State Highway 35 and FM 774. Firefighters finally got it under control, and that's after a separate battle with the wind. Authorities say the fire was tremendous and spread fast. A Fort Lauderdale-bound plane made an emergency landing back in Cuba on Sunday after a bird strike. Images from inside the plane show the cabin filling with smoke shortly after the impact. Video also showed deployed oxygen masks. Passengers heard yelling in panic. An airline spokesperson says the plane reportedly experienced bird strikes to an engine and the aircraft's nose shortly after takeoff. The plane was safely returned to Havana and the passengers evacuated the aircraft via emergency slides. We'll go to Washington for a look at the latest tra air travel mishaps and problems later on Sunrise. Sierra at Tahoe and Twin Bridges was one of many mountains that was shut down due to an influx of snow. The heavy snowfall made it difficult for the resort's operations to get up the mountain and prep the area for skiers and snowboarders, as well as assess the top of the mountain for any avalanche hazards. Sierra at Tahoe plans to be on a delayed opening Monday with only a few lifts operating a larger footprint set to open today. All right, get your cell phone, scan this QR code. It's our quick response code to download the Crossroads Today app. You can get breaking news alerts, vote in our Bureau poll, get the latest news, weather, and sports, and learn all about our ongoing contest right there on the app. Submit those news tips and photos. The time is now 637 on your Tuesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. A certain field in Victoria, soon to be filled with American flags. From close calls to unruly passengers, it's been a turbulent few weeks for air travel. Coming up, we have new examples, including one that was caught on camera. Take a look at the dew points currently up for 60 to 70 degree dew points. Very warm, very humid on the outside. Some fog out there this morning and some parts of the Crossroads region. We'll take a look at that in your forecast coming up. This is Ford Truck Month, Texas. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight, including Ford F-150 and the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger. So get into Ford Truck Month, Texas, and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock. Drive Ford F-150 with 0.9% for 60 months, zero down, and zero payments for 90 days, plus complimentary maintenance. Every day we help kids navigate the realities of the world and make healthy, lifelong choices. Kids learn about alcohol, tobacco, and drugs in lots of ways, often from friends and siblings. While kids may hear lots of harmful information, parents do play a huge role in helping them make the right decision. Talking to your child, sitting down to a family meal at night just to discuss how their day went, or encouraging extracurricular activities can make all the difference. Power through your to-do list. And create a space that makes a splash. Get steel trimmers and blowers starting at just $129.99. Real steel. Find yours. Tired of your typical clock in, clock out job? You need a rewarding career in an entertaining environment that you'll enjoy. Take yourself out of the box and come to the Victoria Television Group. We have an active, fun, creative atmosphere that can help you succeed and keep those everyday work blues away. Come join our energetic and outgoing sales team. Renew your career and learn to use skills you didn't know you had. Call us 361-575-2500 
or email opportunity at victoriatelevision.com for more information. Okay, let's take one more look at your weather right quick. And we'll start off again with the live view from Quero ISD, water tower right there. Cloudy skies, you kind of see there in the distance a little bit. And some fog way in the distance there if you look real close there in the trees and on the ground or so. 71 degrees currently once again in Victoria, so the winds near 10 miles per hour at times. And outside of that, keeping it pretty calm. There's the current visibility around the region. No advisories, no fog advisories anywhere in the Crossroads region. But regardless, if you come across the fog bank, reduce your speed and uh, Low headlight beams, please. Three to four mile visibilities from Goldie Ann to Victoria to Edna, Ganado, and Wharton. Same thing for Bay City down to Port O'Connor as well. So we're keeping the humidity definitely in place today. Feeling very much like a summer day around here, starting off in the low 70s, rising throughout the day. And we get to about the 10 a.m. hour, mid 70s, upper 70s by 12 noon, and low 80s by 2 o'clock in the afternoon to about 4 or 5 or 6 in the evening, of course. But so the wind's still going to continue in the time being with the moisture definitely in place. And the moisture in place, yes, is one ingredient for rainfall. We need a trigger mechanism to get that rainfall and clouds building skyward. That'll happen somewhat with the front nearing our region coming up later in the week. Some rain chances by then. We'll talk about that in the full seven-day outlook a little bit later on. Carolina? Thank you, Trey. A Crossroads head coach is leaving and lots of shakeup in the AP Top 25, but one thing stayed the same. Weekend Sports anchor Zach Brown has more. El Capo head coach and athletic director Chad Royal has announced he is leaving the school district. A report from KULP Radio says he is on his way to the DFW area. Royal says he addressed his players earlier yesterday. In a message to KULP Radio, he says he's moving to be closer to his family and grandchildren in Gunter, where he expects to be named head coach. Royal took over El Campo just over two years ago. They will now be actively seeking a replacement. There's a new top 25 AP poll out for men's basketball, but the same number one. In a weekend that saw many top teams fall, the Cougars just did manage to escape the tough Memphis Tigers. Houston Road, the back of Jamal Shedd, who nailed the shot just as time expired to help keep the Cougs at number one. If they finish next week at number one, it'll be the third time in school history they will finish the year in that position and for the first time in 40 years. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. We want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today. Plus, you can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and on your cell phone, just search Crossroads Today Plus. This morning, federal authorities investigating a growing number of air travel incidents. In just the last two days, we've seen near collisions, a bird strike, and an attack on a flight crew with passengers taking down the suspect. Where are they diverting us? Because wherever it is, there's going to be a bloodbath. This morning, new video of a terrifying mid-air attack. Since I'm taking over this plane. Authorities say a man on a United Airlines flight from Los Angeles to Boston tried to open the emergency exit door mid-flight. They say he later attempted to use a jagged metal spoon. He allegedly broke in the bathroom to stab a flight attendant. Passengers wrestling him to the floor as the pilot declares an emergency. United Airlines thanking the quick action of our crew and customers. All flight attendants are given a certain amount of training on self-defense, but that should not be in their job description to have to have mortal combat with somebody in the back. That is totally unacceptable. Also on Monday, more close calls between passenger planes, including two United jets that clipped wings as one pushed back from the gate. No one was hurt. Over the weekend, more chaos after a bird strike on a Southwest flight from Cuba to Florida. Southwest says multiple birds hit the engine. Smoke entered the cabin and the pilot had to make an emergency landing with passengers escaping down emergency slides. Explosion. A lot of smoke. We couldn't breathe. This all comes after a string of close calls, including one in January at New York's JFK Airport. The NTSB says an American plane crossed an active runway without approval from air traffic controllers, coming within a thousand feet of a Delta plane. Experts say the air traffic controller who alerted the pilot averted a catastrophe. This could have been the worst aviation disaster in U.S. history. Some experts say these close calls are evidence the airlines are struggling to keep up with an increase in post-pandemic travel. The FAA is set to hold a safety summit next week. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. 
And now we take a look at your viewer poll. We want to know, do you plan to travel by air this month? Okay, let's take a look. 6% of you say yes, you do. And 94% of you say no, you do not. Thank you for taking part in our viewer poll. You can do so by scanning the QR code right there on your screen. And you can also do so by going to crossroadstoday.com slash vote. And now we take a look at the field of honor here in Victoria, honoring those who have given their all to protect our freedoms here in this country. Colonel Mike Petrosh talks about the preparation for Warriors Weekend. So for the first year ever, Trey, we're going to post uh, flags at night. And so we're going to have, we're going to go from five o'clock in the evening until about not, uh, 8.30. And then we're going to have our field dedication about 8.30. 9 o'clock, we'll have the, the dedication ceremony and the field lighting. The dedication ceremony will take place on Saturday, May the 6th at Parkway Church on John Stockbauer. The Warriors Weekend Field of Honor has many events planned for this year. Also, volunteers are needed in many areas. Visit warriorsweekend.org for more. And the time is now 6.46 on your Tuesday morning. Still to come on 25 News Now Sunrise. We learn about elite athletes with heart disease, whether or not they can play. Okay, time to celebrate some birthdays. We want to wish Ryan a happy birthday. Hope you have a great day. Love your family. We also here have a happy 11th birthday to Jordan. Hope you have a great day. Love you forever. And Wanda Sykes with a birthday today. She's so funny. The comedian and actress is 59. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to crossroadstoday.com and see the KVU under the menu there and click it and add your birthday. All right, the time is now 6.46 on your Tuesday morning. I want to wish Sydney Penny, our producer, a very happy birthday. Thank you for all you do. The show would not be possible without you. And we'll be right back. Well, how many times when we were working from home did Gelman hold up a cue card when he wanted us to move go along? To, go to break. This is Gelman holding up the cue card telling me to move along. <laughs> Next Live, Margot Martindale and Duchess Sarah Ferguson. When he covered the screen, that was a note to go to commercial. Plus, on March 13th, Live returns to the Oscar stage for Live's After Oscar show. This is your ninth album. Nine feels like a small number compared to how tired I am. Just give me a reason, just a little bit's enough. You sing with your whole body. I'm like an aggressive hummingbird. <laughs> Another song is perfect. I wrote it when I was pregnant. I just wanted a chance to explain myself before I screwed it all up. <laughs> pretty, pretty, please, don't you ever, ever feel like you're less than, less than. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new warning about employment scams. Hello, this is a courtesy invitation to work with Amazon from home. Experts saying this is not a real request. Make up to $400 in a day. But one in an arsenal of more sophisticated methods that scammers are using to steal thousands of dollars from job seekers. In a new report from the Better Business Bureau, employment scams listed as the second riskiest of all the scams they track, saying the frequency at which they're being reported in the agency's scam tracker increasing 23% from 2021 to 2022. A lot of workers don't want to go back to an office. Unfortunately, scammers know this, so they're setting up fake websites and they're luring people in with that. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert tips every job seeker needs to know to get that dream position without getting scammed. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, New York. There's nothing like volunteering at the fire department. There's nothing like hitting the waves. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it hasn't always been easy. Since my skin was so irritated and itchy. And even worse, with all my gear on. Now, I'm staying ahead of my eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. 
so adults can have long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a powerful thing. Ask your eczema specialist how Dupixent can help heal your skin from within. Good morning, good morning, and I hope you're having a great Tuesday so far. Temperature is near 70 degrees, and that number is going to be continuing throughout the next few hours, about 12 noon or so, near 80 degrees, topping that by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Low 80s predicted to be our daytime highs today with plentiful cloud cover, a little bit of fog this morning. No advisories as of yet. Don't expect to see any this late in the day, but we'll have the clouds still continuing through the morning hours. Some breaks in the cloud cover here and there by the afternoon. So some areas around Victoria region will see some sunshine today before they thicken up again the overnight and repeat the process again for your day tomorrow. So 83, 83 degrees today, today, foggy conditions here and there. Some, not anything too dense. Morning clouds definitely and some breaks in the cloud cover, allowing some partly cloudy conditions, some sun by the afternoon. Overnight lows will be about 67 degrees, patchy fog near 70 or topping that along the immediate coast. And then for your day tomorrow, Wednesday, 82 degrees, morning fog, partly cloudy skies, southerly winds, about 10 miles per hour is all. And that trend is going to continue the rest of the work week. A front moves through into the area by a Friday, giving us some rain chance to 30%. We'll take anything we can get. Continue warm for the weekend. A more significant outlook break of a cooler air, courtesy of a front moves through about Monday or so, giving us a little cooler conditions by then, definitely, with lows in the 50s by then. Until then, summertime, kind of like that, weather for the next few days with highs in the 80s. Elite athletes diagnosed with genetic heart disease may be safe to continue to participate in their sport. That's from research presented Monday at the American College of Cardiology's annual scientific session. Among a sample of 76 elite athletes with a genetic heart disease diagnosis who had competed or are still competing in either Division I university or professional sports, 73 out of the 76 did not experience a cardiac event triggered by their disease during the study period. More more than half had no symptoms at all. The new research has not yet been published in a peer-reviewed journal, but the findings suggest that many athletes with a diagnosed genetic heart disease can decide with their healthcare professionals on whether to continue competing in their sport and how to do so safely, instead of being automatically disqualified due to their health condition. Your cell phone bill may be going up if you are a Verizon customer. The company says it's raising prices on some of its older cell phone plans. Verizon hoping the price hike may, get, may be an incentive to get customers to switch to its latest 5G plan. But people who prefer to stay on their older plans will have to pay $2 more a month. The change takes effect on April the 10th. AT&T took similar action last year, raising rates on some of its older plans as well. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. China's foreign minister says there will surely be conflict and confrontation if the U.S. does not hit the brakes. Navarro Small Animal Clinic provides exceptional veterinary care in the crossroads with complete veterinary services for your pet's wellness, including ultrasound, digital x-rays, and in-house laboratory. Navarro Small Animal Clinic, serving Victoria and surrounding communities with comprehensive veterinary care. Our goal is to provide complete care for your pets. Dr. Shana Boak and her staff at Navarro Small Animal Clinic welcomes your pets Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. at 5009 Country Club Drive. I see a story. What kind of movie are we going to make? Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by emotion? And cut. What do you say we're coming for my close up now? The Oscars, live Sunday on ABC. Counterfeit prescription pills laced with fentanyl are killing our kids by the thousands across the nation. The pills look safe. Can you tell which one is real? Drug dealers are pushing these deadly pills on your kids' social media. It only takes one pill to kill. 
And it did. You can help stop the fentanyl epidemic. Talk to your kids about the dangers of counterfeit prescription pills. Visit OnePillKilled.org. And now it's time for today's question of the day. In honor of National Cereal Day, what was the top selling breakfast cereal in 2022? Okay, Trey, we have some guesses. Mary is guessing Honey Bunches of Oats. Mary Helen is guessing Honey Nut Cheerios. Lisa and Kenneth are guessing Fruity Pebbles. Melanie is guessing Captain Crunch. Serena guesses Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Let's crunch. Joshua guessing Honey Nut Cheerios. It reduces cholesterol, <laughs> but it has carbs. Okay, and Leticia guesses Fruity Pebbles. Beth guesses Breakfast Tacos. Adriana guesses Honey Nut Cheerios. And Yemi guesses Corn Flakes. Hmm, good guesses. Thank you everyone for chiming in the question of the day. The answer we're looking for, it is, uh oh, it's Cheerios. Cheerios. Oh, they're so good. Oh yeah, definitely cannot lose with that. Thanks for chiming in the question of the day. Stay tuned tomorrow for another question of the day to get you going for your Wednesday. China's foreign minister says there will surely be conflict and confrontation if the U.S. does not hit the brakes. Quinn Gang suggested the recent balloon crisis could have been avoided. He also echoed accusations from the Chinese president saying the U.S. is trying to contain China's development. These digs came on the sidelines of China's National People's Congress, a key annual political event. Ties between the two countries are at their worst in decades. The U.S. claims it seeks to compete with China but does not see conflict. At least one person is dead after a shooting near Lucas Oil Stadium Monday night. Officers were called to the area shortly before 10 p.m. on a report of a person shot. They found a man who had apparently been shot near South and Missouri streets. He was later pronounced dead at the scene. Police believe the suspect went into the Indiana Convention Center, which was placed on lockdown, and employees were ordered to shelter in place. The lockdown has been lifted since. However, police are asking people to avoid the area as they continue to search for a suspect. Police tweeted late Monday that a review of the convention center's surveillance video showing the suspect entering the building and later leaving the facility, he did not re-enter the building. Phoenix police are investigating after an officer involved shooting. Police say they were called to a home in the Levine neighborhood Monday evening for an unknown call. Authorities say a suspect is down. No officers were hurt, but there are no other details on the incident. It's the third shooting involving Phoenix police in three days. More arrests in Atlanta on Monday as protesters demonstrated outside a construction site for a proposed law enforcement training center. The Southern Poverty Law Center, known for its work on behalf of civil rights groups, says police arrested one of its members during Monday's protest. The employee went to the protest to serve as a legal observer for the National Lawyers Guild. The planned training center dubbed Cop City by opponents has attracted protesters for months now. Police arrested 35 people on Sunday during another demonstration that turned violent. Authorities say protesters tossed Molotov cocktails, shot off fireworks, and hurled bricks and large rocks at officers. Police say about multiple demonstrators face domestic terrorism charges. Okay, we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service. Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and on your cell phone. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. And we have time for a final check of our forecast with Trey. Trey, where's the precipitation? Well, not really in our area as of yet. There'll be some chances before too much longer. And starting off with temperatures in the 70s, rising to the 80s by the afternoon time. So definitely a warm, warm heat of the day. Running the air conditioners. Cloudy skies in the morning time, a little bit of patchy fog. Some breaks in the cloud cover by the afternoon time with highs about 82 degrees, we'll call it. So run the air conditioner be okay out there with foggy conditions. Part of the cloudy skies by these afternoon, 83 degrees. Overnight low, 67 degrees, patchy fog. And tomorrow we're keeping it about 82 degrees again, like today, with part of the cloudy skies. And we'll take that trend and take, take it with you through your Thursday into Friday. Slight rain chance on Friday. Maybe a little bit cooler by the first part of next week. Outside of that, make it a great day today and stay cool, everybody, Carolina. And thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Come to CrossroadsToday.com for more local news, weather, and sports. And join James, Don, Mac, Karina, and Gino, actually Zach, 
today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10. Make it a great Tuesday.